So why is this so? Over here, he's going to talk about the concept, which he brings down many times in the Siva Shalom, which we, we should be doing this every single day. The concept of essence or circumstance. Etzem or mikra. The habir. Why is this so? That no matter how much we sin, Hashem is ready to embrace us fully. There's no red tape. Right? He just wants us and wants us even more after we fall. Come back and just be with me and reconnect to me. And he doesn't say, ooh, after your sin, ugh, that I can't take. We have to understand this. This is Yisaitis of Yiddishkeit. We have to learn this for ourselves and teach it to our children. It doesn't make you sin more. It helps you be saved after inevitable sin happens. When a Jew sins, it's a surface wound. It doesn't touch his inner core. Because the sin is not is only a mikra. It's only a happening, a happenstance. It happened. Sin happens. You ever hear that saying? Sin happens. The Yitzhahara was miskaber, and nichshal, and he fell. So simple, right? But deep inside of him, he is not at peace with this. And we're going to get deep into this, because some people say, yeah, he doesn't look it. That we're not talking about what he looks, we're not even talking about what he says. We're not even talking about what he acknowledges in his feelings. We're talking about deep inside of him. Sometimes sin, so much of an abundance of sin, it doesn't allow us to, to hear our heartbeat. You know that you could hear your heartbeat? Every person could hear their heartbeat. You could say, what do you mean? I never hear my heartbeat. You could. But there are things you need to do. You need to make sure it's very quiet, and you could put either a stethoscope, or you can close your ears, and if you're really quiet, you could hear your heartbeat. Isn't that amazing? Sometimes when we sin so much, and, and sometimes especially teenagers, young adults, people are thrown into such a crazy world, they can't hear their heartbeat. They can't hear the basco inside of them, shuvu banam shevavim. That doesn't mean it's not real. He's telling you fact. He's telling you the reality. Inside, nothing changed. Who atzmai enoi mashlem imzeh? The person himself is not at peace with his behavior, even when he says, I love being this way. And that's why, this is why, why do we say that they're always called children? A Jew, even if he sins Yisrael, who he still remains in the same category. You fall outside in the mud, you didn't break your elbow, you didn't break your arm. Your, 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 your clothing is dirty. That's what he's saying, no matter what. It doesn't touch his in inside. But I know it's really true, because I've done my research. I used to go ahead and do this um, with, with many kids after I got to know them, and, and they knew I'm a trustworthy person, and they weren't just going to give me the answer that they would give most other people. I would go ahead and I would do this. At the right time, again, it had to be after they knew that I'm not here to make you from, and, I'm, and it was true. I really had no intention of making anybody from. I just l helped the kids in home sweet home. I wanted them to be stable. I had no idea that they would become from. It wasn't my agenda. But at some point, I was able to say to them, as a true friend, and, and to get a real reaction, and the reason I keep on stressing this is because, no, if you go over to your kid or somebody, that you, they're not going to give you the real answer. You need, it needs to be at the right time to get the real answer. And I would say to them as follows. Imagine that all of a sudden a contract appeared in your hand and a pen in the other one, and it said, sign here and you won't sin anymore. Would you sign or not? Immediately, every single kid, everyone said, of course. And I would say, so you know what that shows? You just proved to Hashem. You just proved to all the angels. But most of all, you just proved to yourself that your life of sin, the way that you're living now, it's not a shita. You don't really believe in it. You sin just like I sin and everybody sins. And maybe you sin more or less. I don't even know if that's true. But let's say you sin more because more things happen to you. Worse things happen to you. You got thrown into a, a different world, a different category. 
But you don't believe in sin any more than the biggest tzaddik believes in sin. It's not a shita. And if you can sign a paper and be the biggest tzaddik, you would do it in a heartbeat. And this is true even if someone says, I'm an atheist, and even those who are fighting us day and night. And yes, if you attack them and you go over and say, would you sign it? They'll say, no, I don't believe it. You have to know when and where. This is a fact. This is a fact that is true. Who is the doctor? Imagine that there's somebody that he has to have an operation. So if the doctor is a stranger, so the way that nature is, is that the doctor is concerned about one thing, healing you from your machla. The actual tsar pain that you have in the middle is not his, his main focus. The nurses, you can call the nurses if you're in pain. And, and yeah, you're going to have pain, but I got the machla out of you, that's their focus. And even if they're courteous, and even if they care, but that's not their main focus. But if the surgeon is the father of the chayla, is the father of the sick person, then the child's das, the child's brain is calm, and he doesn't have to worry about any pain. Because he knows, ki he knows it hurts his father just like it hurts him. That's what we say, Hashem is with us in our pain. And any more pain, any extra pain, additional pain that he doesn't need to have, he's not going to have. His father's going to make sure that he's taken care of in the best possible way. Not just the operation, the pre-op, and then the calm his nerves, and make sure he's on the, medic the, the numbing medication and the pain medication before the pain comes. He's going to protect his son no matter what. You should know that that is what it means. We are fortunate because sometimes the purification process can be painful. Sometimes the purification process is an operation. Sometimes a person to be saved has to be ripped out from his friends or from his situation. Sometimes a person for his soul, for the purpose of his soul, which we don't understand Gilgulim, but for him, he has to go through pain. I've had so many parents come to me with children who were off the derech and the parents were in tremendous pain. And two years later, three years later, they save their kids and they say themselves that they are different people, much more compassionate, loving, derhaibin, higher, closer to Hashem, more amuna, more bitachin, bringing out Mikhail chalapayel, all of those ideas to really rely on Hashem, really beg Hashem, really want Mashiach to come. All of these things are much, much, much more brought out and higher because of what they went through. So yes, sometimes there's pain involved. But if you know that who is doing the purification, who is doing that process? Who is scraping off the boils or the burn that Nebuch sometimes they have to scrape off something in order to, to heal the, the wound? Who's doing it? Is mommy, is tati, somebody who loves me and is all my pain they feel. They feel my pain. At least you know that you're not going to get a careless person who doesn't care about that. A regular nurse, she's going to have to clean the wound. She'll clean the wound. She doesn't care, even if they do care, but it's not the same as a mommy and a daddy. Mommy and a daddy will make sure you shouldn't get one drop more pain. Says Rebbe Kiva, Ashrechem Yisrael, that we don't have to go to an angel to clean us, to purify us. But Hashem does it himself. Hashem who loves us. Hashem who feels our pain. And that's how we know that even in our worst situations, we are best off. And that's a reason to say Ashrechem Yisrael. So how can we do this? How can we pull this down? The way to pull down this bechina, this concept of that our Father in Heaven is taking care of us. Even in a situation where I am not deserving, I'm not behaving properly, I'm not good, I'm not doing my end of the relationship. Still, you still it's going to be brought out that level that we are Hashem's children. How do you bring this out on a higher level? And this is especially relevant. When we need miracles, when we really need salvation, says in the Nesiva Shalom, the way to bring it out, 
שיהו די מיימן כי בוא נמתם על שמו יקחם. ובעצם כוייכו אמונה ממשיך הנה סמדרג הגבויה הזויס בחינס בוא נם. When you think to yourself, eh, Hashem doesn't care about me, it lowers the relationship. When you call out, Tati, I know that you care about me the same, and even more, because I'm in physical pain, or emotional pain, and guess what? Even spiritual pain, where I sin against you, you know how bad this is for me, for my Olam Haba, my eternity, and even especially for my Olam Hazeh. So I'm calling out to you, and I'm saying, Tati, help me. When you have a Muna that you believe that I am Hashem's child, when you believe that you are Hashem's child, that brings out the more, a, a higher level of emotions that are mamshech the madrega hagvoya b'chinas bonim. And with this we can understand the beautiful, beautiful pshat that it brings out in Rosh Hashanah, that is brought down in Tyrus Avais, which is the sefer that the Nesiv Shalom wrote from previous Slanama uh, legacy. And he brings that from Marin Asaba Kadisha Mislanim, Schusyaganalenu, one of the, those cute little nuggets. We say, Hayoim Yam, Hayoim Haras Oilam. Today is the birthday of the world. Hayoim Yam, Ba Mishpot Kol Yitzure Elamim. Today, Hashem judges all creations. And then we say, Im Kibanim, Im Kavadim. Either like children or like slaves. Either. Who's deciding either? Sounds like we're saying, okay, Hashem, you decide. Im Kibanim. If you want to treat us like sons, then came to have mercy on us like a father has mercy on his son. But if you're going to treat us like slaves, our eyes are looking up to you. Says the Sabbath Adisha, no, 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 no. We're always banim. <laughs> what does it mean? He says, That is the mishpat. The mishpat is on us. How did we behave? Hashem is judging us to see how we behave. You can bring your father a glass of water because that's your job and he said he'll pay you if you do it. Or you can do it because you love him. We can do mitzvahs because we're slaves and we have to because we're commanded to. We can behave like an eved or we can behave like a son who wants to make his father happy. That is the gufa, that is the mishpat. If we behaved like banim, if we served Hashem as avadim, so then he's our master. Oh, you think Hashem is your master? He treats you like a master. We get to decide. Now, how would you like it? This coming Rosh Hashanah, how would you like to be treated? Would you like to be treated like a slave? Or would you like to be treated like a child? It depends on you, on how you serve Hashem. When we serve Hashem like a son, that brings out the mushiness, the passion of the relationship of the love that Hashem has for us, and we get treated like a son. The Lechaira, Mashaiach al Mishpat, he asks a question on that word. How could you say that the Mishpat is im kibanim kavodim? Didn't we just say that Allah kiremeya ben kachu ben kakuim banim? Didn't you just tell me that Remeyer says we're always treated like sons? So how could you, the Sabbath Kadisha Mislanim, say that the Mishpat is, that the judgment is whether I am going to be treated like a son or an Eved, a slave, based on how I treated Hashem? Bottom line is, it doesn't matter how I behaved. Hashem always treats me like a son. Ben kachu, ben kachu, banim. Or as Avram Fried says, ben kachu, ben kach, banai heim. Either way, we're a son. Ella, shagamlu Reb Meir. Even a to a mayor that says that we're always called children, and we are always in the category of children. But aderech la amshich b'chinezu shal banim. He rak b'koyach amuna shiudi maimen bebira gomor shu geben lufne amelach. Ve'amuna bazem amshicha I love madregazu. Even in the category of son, we have to feel like a son. We have to ask and be like a son. We have to say avinu malkenu. Ki kashi yehudi maimen shi yisrael him banim b'chal hamatzavim. When you believe that you are a son of Hashem in every situation, meaning when you're not behaving properly, since you believe that you're a son, and you want to behave like a, like a son, because by saying, Hashem, I know you're my father, I'm your son, then what you're saying is, even if I can't yet, 
But I really wish, I really wish, like signing that contract, oh boy, I wish I could act like a son. So that's what brings out the super level of that feeling that Hashem goes ahead and, he, and he, he gives us even more of that feeling of a parent to a child. 